In today's video, we get the opportunity to listen to a great lecture from Neville Goddard about how to turn the desires of our imagination into reality. In this lecture, Neville gives examples of how everything starts from our imagination before it becomes reality. After we listen to Neville's lecture, I will provide my interpretation of what Neville meant in hopes of putting it in more simplistic terms for all to understand. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I present Neville Goddard. Enjoy. Now, what would it be like if it were true? What would I feel like were it true? Now, catch the mood and try to give that mood all the sensory vividness of reality, all the tones of reality, and then sleep in it just as though it were true. And then await the inevitable. The inevitable is you're going to resurrect it and objectify it on the screen of space. And then the world will call it real. And they may not believe you. It doesn't really matter. If you tell them it came to pass because you simply imagined it. Now, they'll point to the series of events that led up to it. And they will give credit to the bridge of incident across which you walk towards the fulfillment of that state. And they'll point out some physical thing that was the cause. No, the cause is invisible, or the cause is God. And God is invisible to mortal eye. Who knows what you're imagining? No one knows. But you can sit down and imagine, and no one can stop you from doing it. But can you give reality to the imagined state? If you do, yes, a bridge of incident will appear in your world. And you'll walk across some series of events leading up to the fulfillment of the imaginal state. But don't give causation to any physical step that you took towards the fulfillment of it. You imagine yourself having a marvelous business. And then comes the day a building is for sale and you haven't a nickel towards it. And a total, not a total stranger, but a man comes in and asks you quite in a friendly manner, are you going to buy it? And knowing you don't have a penny, you say to him, as you would a friend to a friend, with what? And then he says, well, I have money. It's only in the bank put, drawing nothing. You say, but I have no collateral. But he said, I watch you. You're an honest person. Your family, they're honest. I think they are. Would you like me to buy it for you? Get my lawyer to bid for it. If they knew that I'm bidding, that I have money, they'll bid me up. And so I get it at the very lowest price by getting a lawyer who represents more than one client, and they do not know who he represents, and he'll bid for it. Are you willing to take it regardless of the price? And you say yes. I'll take it, but I have no collateral. All I need is your signature, that you will simply pay 6% on whatever the price is, and then reduce that principle over a period of 10 years. Agreed? Yes. But then sign this, and we'll see if we can buy it. That day, you owned the building, and you didn't have one nickel when you owned the building that day. You only had your signature on a piece of paper. At the end of 10 years, you repay the man his principal. You reduce it every year, paying him 6% on the remaining principal, and reduce the entire thing at the end of 10 years. That man dies 20 years later and leaves you 150,000 in cash tax-free and a couple of homes and many personal belongings. In the meanwhile, you continue in that business and it multiplies and multiplies. And that year was 1922, 1924. This is now 1968. That building, I'm speaking factually, that building in 1924 is now gone. He paid only $50,000 for it. It was repaid and repaid. A bank three years ago bought the property, because the building was rotted, bought the property for $840,000 in cash and no capital gain from 50,000 to 840,000. In the meanwhile, the business has expanded into all the other islands so that today you couldn't buy them out for $15 million, all in imagination. And this goes back to the imagination that preceded this man's offer to buy the building. For the young man seeing this building and entertaining a thought that the present owners deceived his father and through deception got him out of a partnership, a junior partnership. And he was moved 
not to get even, but to prove that he really had something within him and could be a success in spite of their deception. And so, every day he would see on that marquee, not their name, but his own family's name. And he would see it in his mind's eye because you could not take their name and transliterate it and make it spell this man's family's name. But he saw it, and in his mind's eye he saw that name, which if true would imply the family owned it. He did it every day, twice a day, for two years. And then came this sudden, out of the nowhere. And the whole thing was made possible, and today they're all over the islands. And they have no partners. They've never taken in one partner, never sold one bit of stock outside of a family ownership. All by imagination. Now I know what I'm talking about because I am a member of that family. I'm speaking of my own family. This is not hearsay. I know it. My second brother, Victor, was the one in whose imagination this whole thing began to bloom. And he still works all by imagination. He knows what he wants, and then after having decided in himself, that's what I want, and that's good for the business, he then in his mind's eye, he appropriates it. And then let things happen. As told us in scripture, the vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens, it will flower. If it be long, then wait, for it is sure, and it will not be late. Read that in the book of Habakkuk. Here is the true translation of that passage in Habakkuk. So when you know what you want, remain faithful to that assumption. And the assumption, though at the moment, is denied by your senses and denied by reason. If you persist in it, it will harden into fact. Are we not told that God calls a thing that is not seen as though it were seen and then the unseen becomes seen? He calls everything from the unseen into the seen in this simple manner, for he is the resurrecting power. So if I assume that I am, I don't have to have evidence to support it. I assume that I am. I am what? Well, I name it. And having given it a name, given it form, given it definition, remaining in it, I resurrect it. So I know what I'm talking about. All I need from you is the acceptance of it. Will you believe it? Will you believe that with God all things are possible? Will you believe that all things are possible to men? Well, you can prove it in the not distant future. But you are the operant power. It will not work itself. If you dare to assume this very night that you have a better job than you now hold, or that you have a larger income, you may be fired tomorrow. Don't be concerned. On reflection, you'll see it was necessary to move you towards the fulfillment of your assumption. You could be fired. And I wouldn't bat an eye if you told me tomorrow, well, I did what you told me. You know what happened? I was fired. I have seen that. It takes someone to fire you, to get you into a better job. I have seen that time and again. I wouldn't go out and quit the job. You may be promoted in the job, or you may be invited by some other concern that is competitive to join them. I do not know how it happens. I only know if you remain faithful to the assumption it's going to happen and you're going to be promoted towards the fulfillment of the state that you have dared to assume that is yours. I could tell you unnumbered stories along this nature. So here I say dwell in the end. The end is where we begin. For if I see my name on the marquee, that's the end. I don't wait for the incident to take place in my world to move from one to the other to the other, leading up to that. I dwell in the end. If I go to the very end, what would it be like were it true? Now that we have heard this inspiring lecture from Neville Goddard, let's break down each section of the speech to make it more simplistic. Let's start with the concept of imagination shapes reality. Neville states that everything starts as an imagination. All things you desire in life were once only imagined. Your favorite book, movie, favorite meal, the type of house you want, and the clothes you like to wear all begin within someone's imagination. This idea emphasizes that the power to create your reality lies within your thoughts and imagination. This shows you the power of your imagination and dreaming big. 
Neville then talks about the importance of aligning with your own desires. Focus on what you truly want, not what others think you want. Permission from others is unnecessary. You have the authority to define your desires without seeking validation. It is important to remember that your desires are your desire and no one else. This also means that whatever you desire should not be discussed with anyone else other than your Father God. See, many of us feel the need to share our desires with others to get some sort of validation when in all actuality, the only assurance you need is between you and God. Next, let's talk about visualization and feeling. You must imagine the desired outcomes vividly and feel the desire already fulfilled. Ask yourself how it would feel if your desired situation were already true. Engage all your senses in this visualization to make it feel real and it will have no choice but to come true. Neville states that it is the law of the universe. Now let's touch on the power of sleep and subconscious. Before sleep, immerse yourself in the feeling of your desired reality. This feeling imprints your subconscious mind, which plays a crucial role in manifesting your desires. The subconscious mind possesses a significantly greater potency compared to the conscious mind. It can handle vast amounts of data received through the five senses and swiftly relay this information to the brain. This rapid translation occurs almost instantaneously. Think of your subconscious mind as the automatic pilot of an airplane. It's like a program running in the background controlling how you walk, sit, breathe and talk without consciously thinking about it. This happens because your brain holds the instructions for these actions. In addition, your subconscious mind also has a special role called homeostasis. This means it keeps things in balance. Just like it maintains your body temperature and keeps your heart beating regularly, it also ensures that your thoughts and actions align with what you've done before. When it comes to your thoughts and feelings, your subconscious mind has a say too. It can make you feel uneasy or fearful when you try to do something new or change established habits. These feelings are signs that your subconscious is active, even though it has been working on these patterns for a while behind the scenes. Think of your subconscious mind as the captain of your life's ship. It's the one guiding and managing everything. Your conscious mind, on the other hand, follows the directions from your subconscious. Unlike your conscious mind, the subconscious doesn't analyze things. It simply accepts and acts upon what's stored in it. So how does this all tie into manifestation? Your subconscious mind plays a crucial role. When you imagine and believe in your desires, you're impressing these thoughts onto your subconscious. It then takes charge, influencing your actions and decisions, often without you even realizing it. This is why maintaining a positive and focused mindset is essential for successful manifestation. Your subconscious mind is like the powerful engine that propels your desires into reality. As we navigate the journey of turning our imagination into reality, we encounter the process of manifestation. While the end result may not mirror our initial vision, we find that events and opportunities align to bridge the gap between our imagination, current circumstances, and our desired state. In understanding causation and imagination, we learn not to credit physical steps alone for the fulfillment of our desires. Instead, we acknowledge the unseen forces, whether it's the realm of imagination or a higher power, that propel our aspirations. Persistence and tenacity become our allies as we hold on to our imagined state even when external evidence appears contradictory. Trusting our assumptions and remaining committed to our vision create a powerful synergy. The concept of timing and divine plan reminds us that our desires are destined to materialize at the perfect moment. Patience becomes our virtue as we persist in our faith that the universe's orchestration is in our favor. Central to our journey is the power of assumption. With unwavering conviction, we adopt the mindset of our desired state as a reality already achieved. By immersing ourselves in this belief, we actively shape our reality. Faith and belief become our anchors, validating that the fusion of imagination and alignment with higher forces opens pathways to the seemingly impossible. Our unwavering faith propels the manifestation process, amplifying our outcomes. Surprisingly, unexpected paths to fulfillment often emerge, 
What might initially appear as setbacks, like losing a job, can become stepping stones to more aligned opportunities that lead to our desired state. By dwelling in the end, we transcend the minutiae of intermediary steps and immerse ourselves in the ultimate goal. This anchors our consciousness in the realized state, pulling us closer to its fulfillment. Finally, our emotional connection to the desired state serves as the fuel for manifestation. By embracing the emotions associated with our assumed reality, we infuse our intention with potent energy, amplifying its materialization. The process of successful manifestation intertwines imagination, belief, emotional engagement, and persistent action. By weaving these principles into the fabric of our lives, we sculpt our reality in meaningful and transformative ways. Remember, you possess the innate power to turn your imagination into reality. Embrace these principles, trust the process, and embark on a journey of profound self-discovery and creation. If you enjoy this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.